Welcome back everyone to more creepy videos and if you haven't already smash that like and subscribe button and let's dive in. What degree tilt are we on in the globe earth model? 23.4 degrees. Taking from a 90 degree angle that's 66.6. .6. Does that number sound familiar? The circumference of the earth in nautical miles is 21,600. That's 6 times 6 times 600. The curvature rate of the earth according to science is 8 inches per mile square. That's 0.666 feet per mile square. We're supposedly going around the sun at 66,600 miles per hour. The diameter of the moon is 6 times 6 times 60, 2,160. Do you think that all those 666s are a coincidence? Or is this a trick from the enemy that lied about creation and tries to make the scriptures look like they're not true? Did the creator coincidentally make every metric of the earth be the devil's number? I went ahead and checked this and it turns out that 4 out of 5 of what was mentioned is true. So are the ones in power trying to manipulate this knowledge, trying to deceive us into believing that the earth is spherical, to try and prevent us from knowing that our creator exists? <laughs> So Airbnb just partnered with Dodge A Cat and she's doing a performance in her own living room. But look at the picture of this in the description. Looks like she's going to be bringing in 15 people to this private performance slash storytelling. And just by looking at the picture she posted on her Airbnb, it looks like she's going to be performing in this circle surrounded by candles on a bar stool and she's going to be wearing this bridal dress. But when you look at the description, this is what it says. Devour a private set in a secret living room. View my grandmother's art. Feed your soul, literally. Spill your secrets at my vanity. I left a question on the mirror. Here's the mirror. Answer in whatever medium feels right. I don't know, just looking at these pictures kind of gives me an eerie vibe, but for $77, you can request to be a part of this intimate experience and it'll be taking place in West Hollywood. I think what she needs is 15 people to show up at her house to perform an exorcism. Damn! Damn! It's getting weird. Part infinity. Your most bizarre story of the day, an 81-year-old man from Montana is going to prison for cloning giant sheep. Prosecutors say Arthur Schubarth illegally used tissue from what's called a Marco Polo sheep, enormous Asian sheep, to create a hybrid breed of giant sheep in the U.S. Take a look. Arthur named it the Montana Mountain King. This scheme involving five other people was meant to create a larger hybrid species of sheep that would be more valuable for hunting ranches. He used his giant sheep to stud out others. He paid a hunter for the testicles of a large Rocky Mountain sheep he wanted to clone. Our wildlife officials took Montana Mountain King. They're keeping it at a facility till it could be sent to a zoo. The guy pleaded guilty in March, and he got six months in prison today. <sighs> Can some of y'all just go sit down somewhere? Let's go sit down. Have a seat. Relax. You're 81. Relax. I feel like sheep, cloning sheep is like the gateway to other stuff. Because you're not just going to stop at cloning sheep. You know what I'm saying? You're going to try some other shit. Go sit down. If you were out hunting and an 81 year old man approached you, looked at your large Rocky Mountain and asked for his testes so we can go ahead and clone sheep, how would you react to that? I had a cousin that was I'm trying to think how much older than me, uh, probably 15 years older than me or somewhere in there. In the mid 60s, he said, let's ask your dad about the Air Force Blue Book. And I had some recollection of it, but nothing really concrete. And I said, sure, I'll ask him. So I went up and asked him. I said, look, you're a scientist. You're a, an intellectual man. Um, tell me about uh, flying saucers and tell, tell me about this uh, Blue Book project. Was it all a cover-up? And he turned to me and he said, in the year 2025, that material will be declassified and I'll gladly tell you the whole story. Which I replied, I won't even be around in 2025, so <laughs> tell me now. And he just kept saying, 
it'll be declassified in the year 2025. So, so I take it your father was really kind of close, close-lipped on on what he did. While Absolutely. He and that. Absolutely closed lip on what he did because he he had top security clearance and he was really ethical. I mean, he wouldn't cross that line. So if military personnel who discussed UFO reports with unauthorized people was a crime, then it's obvious they were trying to hide something from the public. Are they really going to declassify that information next year? I had he doubt. What do you call a duck that's on drugs? A quackhead? <laughs> Wouldn't it be crazy if one of the largest lithium deposits in the world was right outside of Asheville, North Carolina? Wouldn't it be crazy if the largest lithium mining company in the world three days before the flood began submitted the permits for their mine right outside of Asheville, North Carolina? Wouldn't it be crazy if the mining company was just given $250 million in grants to help with construction of their mine right outside of Asheville, North Carolina? Wouldn't it be crazy if less than a month before the flood started, BlackRock acquired 2.2 million shares of stock in, in that mining company. That's crazy. Wouldn't it be crazy if the residents that opposed the mine uh, had their homes and properties destroyed? That would never happen though. I, I'm sure they wouldn't take things that far. Stay safe, Florida. Uh, let me know. On a serious note, yeah, uh, all, all my people in Florida, feel free to message me anything throughout this. Stay safe. My thoughts and prayers to everyone who's been affected by these hurricanes over the past few weeks, and especially how some of you guys are being treated by the likes of FEMA and your government. It really is sad. I can't vouch for what he's saying here, but what I can say is that if you do some research on BlackRock and Ukraine, it, you'll be very surprised. A woman was taking a picture of the sky at night, the moon, the stars, whatever, next to a graveyard, and she caught something odd in the picture. Do you see it? Let me highlight it for you. Do you see that? What's that? There's definitely something there. And she didn't just take one picture. She took several. But the problem is, all but the first photo are kind of out of focus like this because she wasn't aiming for the graveyard. She was aiming for the sky. So let's go back, look at the original photo, but zoom it in. Here we are a little closer, and you can definitely see there's something there. It's kind of green, kind of lit up, but still transparent in a way. But just to make sure, so our guess of what it is is a little better, let's get even closer. Here we go. This is what she caught in the graveyard. That's an apparition. It looks like a person. It's an apparition. I don't know if it's a ghost, a demon, a goblin, a ghoul, or Pete. But it's definitely something. Tell me what you think this could be, Booskies. Captured on camera in a graveyard at night. Let me know in the comment section. Shabadoo. It looks like a skeleton wearing a blonde wig, a white dress holding flowers, but what do you think? Look at this photograph. Every time I do it makes me laugh. Rip down the side of me, quick yeah. jump out for you, let it get. to believe that when we tear down some garlic that our bodies are getting rid of parasites and killing them off one by one but because of our digestive system would the process not be different yep deadly chemicals that seep into your skin causing many to become deceased is being put into millions of children and adult clothes and this is no accident people were terrified after south korean researchers reported alarmingly high levels of deadly chemicals in over 144 shein temu and aliexpress clothes with levels 10 to 200 
129 above the legal limit. And once it's absorbed into the skin, there is no cure. Deadly chemicals like phthalates and lead that when worn for hours at a time daily can result in obesity, diabetes, heart issue, premature births, infertility, mutation of the cells, and many more issues that can form within a year and for some just months. Reports from Science Directly warns us that once the clothes enter the home, we are in danger as these chemicals will stay, become airborne, and be breathed in. It can even spread to other clothes if in the same machine or even contaminate food. The most concerning issues have been found in shoes and jewelry. While they do exist in clothes, it's a bit less. Honestly, as far as I'm concerned with the likes of Temu and Shein, I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest, given the fact that they even have like five month old babies working for them. Is that the exit? What? Hey, we got a major update here. Remember the video of the radar, the potential weather machine? Well, we found out that there's multiple of them and there's a lot of power that we tracked on the grid that's running to these machines. There is a massive amount of power running towards these things. I mean, look at this. This is literally a solar grid running here to these machines. I'm not making this up. A whole solar farm, why would they need this much power in the middle of nowhere for some radar? I mean, what the heck is this? I'm just so confused about the radar, whether it's a weather machine or not, why they're guarding it with helicopters, and what this whole power station is. What is this used for, and why are they running so much power through here? If you all have any idea, comment down below, because we're trying to do this investigation the right way. I don't know much about this other than him being followed by three black helicopters because he stumbled across what he said was red ores or what appeared to be some form of like weather machines or modifications. I mean, is this a weather machine? I will let you guys decide on that. Have you ever heard of a game called Werewolf? No. Everyone gets a piece of paper. It's either got villager written on it, but two have the word werewolf. Someone runs the game to make sure no one's cheating and they go, okay, it's nighttime, everyone close your eyes. Werewolves choose someone to kill and the werewolves go, they say, okay, everyone close your eyes, it's morning time, open them again. During the night, Francis was killed. There's then a conversation, and this is where it gets interesting, mm. between all the villagers and the two werewolves over who the werewolves are. Then at the end of the day, the, the villagers have to decide who they're going to kill, and they say, well, we're going to kill Constantine. Mm. It's revealed by the person running the game, I'm afraid Constantine was a villager. And the game continues. Mm. The villagers win the game if they kill both werewolves. Mm. The werewolves win the game if they kill all but two villagers. And the werewolves usually win. The game was invented by a student of sociology in Russia who wanted to prove his thesis that an uninformed majority will always lose a battle of information against an informed minority. So that just shows when you have hidden information, you can completely manipulate a large group of people. When you look at the way the world is now, there's a real war on information probably more so now than at any other time in history. And so this guy is speaking 100% truth. supposed to do that I honestly thought only only hamburger meat did that nah, fish not supposed to do that I don't know if I want to eat this anymore yeah <laughs> I don't know about you, but if you're not eating your meat like a multi-pack of furbs, then you're simply not eating meat. Questions to ponder about. What does an Egyptian pyramid do on an American dollar bill? Why did 56 countries sign a treaty to not venture into Antarctica? Why do planes never fly over Antarctica? How did NASA lost the lunar landing footage? Probably one of the most important moments for humanity. If Neil Armstrong was the first to set foot on the moon, who was holding the camera? Why did we never go back to the moon? If monkeys evolved into humans, why are monkeys still monkeys? How are gigantic, symmetrical, detailed, sacred, and geometrically solid structures, such as cathedrals and parliamentary buildings, created by people who lived in wooden huts, rode in horse-drawn carriages, and had neither machines or lasers? How is it that the same Peruvian architecture is found in the whole world? 
Why are there images in ancient Egyptian art that seem to represent spaceships? There are remains and images of giant human beings found? And why is there talk of giants in several ancient writings of distant cultures, including the Bible? Why do ancient Egyptian works of art represent pine trees? And it is a coincidence that even the pineal gland looks like a pine tree. Why are there depictions of dragons all over the world and in different cultures, thousands of years apart, and is also mentioned in the Bible? Why is there so much demonic symbolism in the music and entertainment industry? Why most video games revolve around killing? How is it possible? that movies and cartoons like The Simpsons were able to predict specific cultural events with such detail and accuracy? How do forest fires melt cars leaving trees intact? How do news anchors from all over the world and on different channels say and repeat the same scenario to the letter? If we are more advanced and informed than ever, why do we have the highest rates of obesity, cancer and heart problems, let alone depression? Truth will set you free. Way too many questions to answer, but at this point, the world feels like it's a lab and we're all just guinea pigs in some mass experiment. The reason that all your computer screens are blue lit, the reason none of them are red lit, the reason none of them pay attention to circadian biology is because that original technology was developed in a government program that Bobby Kennedy knows about and I happen to know about because I went to medical school at LSU. For those of you who've never heard about Operation Paperclip, you think it's all conspiracy theory. So at Tulane Neurology and Tulane Neurosurgery in the 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s, the CIA started a program there where they would do all these crazy things to monkeys. And the CIA wanted to see how they could control things utilizing different things like drugs and things like that. Where the neurosurgeons got involved, which is my clade, we would drill help the tops of the heads off, put wires into the thalamus, put electricity in there, and kind of see what kind of behavioral changes we could have. One of the guys that was in that program was a guy named Professor Delgado. He got the idea to take it in a bigger animal. When he saw that we could control the behavior with the wired device, he said, what if we do it wirelessly? So he checked it in monkeys and checked it in bulls, and it turned out you can do it wirelessly with RFID chips and semiconductors. Then the CIA took it to the next level. They said, well, since this is electromagnetic radiation, and they begin on wirelessly, what if we did it through light through screens? And it turns out you can. And that's the reason why all your computer screens have the frequencies they have. It's almost like the RFID chip is Elon Musk's Neuralink, and the screen frequency is Mark Zuckerberg's new set of holographic glasses. Humans ain't real, brother. That's a ruse made up by the monolith to distract us from the fact that they are putting plants in our food. On tonight's episode of Unanswered Oddities, humans, are they real or just a youngling's fairy tale? Humans have been a great mystery of our time. These creatures of lore supposedly ate potatoes and enjoyed sleep. They're thought to be long extinct, if they ever existed at all. But recent sightings all across the world have drummed up the debate once again. Rural Morgmog, two hours outside of Deedal, a hiker claims to have seen a human. So yeah, it was, it's, uh, it was a Tuesday night. I had just gotten home from spitting. I went out for my midnight lurk, you know, I was just being creepy and weird, and that's when I saw it. It was a human. You could tell by the knees. I've seen them in the historical books, and it was just standing there, listening to sounds. I thought I might die. I was called to the scene around midnight. Mr. Fugsnuck was in a panic. I searched the area for humans, but only found a toothbrush. We don't know much about humans other than they were most likely wildly stupid creatures. We do believe they did some cool things though, like super sweet water sports. The current prevailing theory is that humanity was wiped off the planet by what were called escalators. One by one, each human slowly sucked into the moving stairs, taken out by their own dumb invention. It would have been quite the sight. But of course not everyone believes that humans existed. Humans ain't real, brother. That's a ruse made up by the monolith to distract us from the fact that they are putting plants in our food. Whether you are a believer or not, something happened to Mr. Fugsnuck that night. Now that I think about it, it could have just been a tree that I saw. It was pretty dark, and my eyes were closed, so it's hard to say. Over the past week, me and Carl have been working on this podcast, which is why I didn't have a video up on Wednesday past, but we keep running into like technical issues, so we're hoping to get that resolved and the first episode out for next Friday. However, over at our uh, Truth Streets on the Fiction podcast, there is a preview there, so if you want to go ahead and hop over there, and if you like it, you can go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell for the first episode. But until then, guys, if you haven't already, smash that like and subscribe button, and 
until the next video, look after yourselves, stay safe and stay blessed, and I'll see you then.